Hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast. My name's Tim and I'm from the Oak Bytes Blogazine and with me is Dr. Roy Shesterwitz from the Tech Rights website. It's Friday night and I'm gonna get sauce. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He tried to boss me and was outbossed. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost Underneath his creeper bridge Hoping goats will cross Quoting Ashcroft and Tom Ridge I Welcome everyone the to the 74th episode of the show. Uh, today is the 4th of August, uh, 2012. And today we've got a very special guest. He's the person who's known probably best for his contributions to openoffice.org at the time. Uh, currently works with the LibreOffice project, and he's also one of the main people, or one of the public faces of the Mandriva project, especially now that it's been uh, undergoing some changes internally. Uh, and today we actually intend to try and speak a bit more about the situation with regards to ODF and OOXML. These are issues we, all of us, including Charles himself, have covered extensively, I think, since around 2000. And uh, six and seven or so. All right, sorry, with Massachusetts at some stage trying to impose, not really impose, but really in some sort, in some in some sense, I suppose impose, but trying to standardize and to uh, um, and to pressure people to use the ODA format as opposed to the proprietary formats back then, .doc and XLS and all of these extremely proprietary, you know, problematic formats which were impeding the adoption of free software just such as open office and K office and everything else. So what we're trying to do today is to shed some light on the on the situation these days. Uh, a lot of people like myself don't know exactly what's been happening in migrations, in governments, in projects, in in, in fact, in, when it comes to implementation of ODF one point two, which is the latest version I believe. Is this is this the case, Charles? Well uh well thank you. Thank you for uh, having me uh, here at the show. Um, so, in, in in terms of the migrations, I mean, I think that what we have been seeing uh, in the, the past uh, year or two is that ODF has uh, grown more and more mature. I think that what we have now with ODF one or two, uh, in terms of uh, you know a standard and a specification, is a much more feature complete specification. So that will be for ODF one or two. If you compare that to ODF 1.0 or ODF 1.1, you'll see that there's been tremendous work that's been uh, invested at the OASIS Consortium's uh, ODF uh, technical committee's level. And I think this is definitely a good thing. All the more so that when you uh, look at the participants, you will see that there's kind of a uh, pink elephant in the room there um, because that's Microsoft. And so Microsoft is, you know, uh, assumed the, um, you know, one of the uh, members of the ODFTC, and they've been actually active. Uh, obviously, I will not hide you that uh, when we first uh, when we first saw them uh, entering the TC, uh, everybody was kind of uh, extremely wary uh, of what would happen. Uh, in the end, um, and quite surprisingly, uh, these guys have been uh, contributing their share uh, of work, uh, regardless of uh, the options that were being discussed and debated. And uh, so, yeah, in the end, uh, we have an ODF 1.2 uh, standard, well, standard, it's a noise specification right now, and, uh, you know, soon it will be pushed to the ISO. So we have that, and we have, obviously, a market. And I think that the market uh, has obviously grown uh, in a significant uh, proportion. However, um, what we see and what we have started to, to see or watch again is... I would say a, a growing disconnection between the um, migration to, um, let's say, alternative office suites and the actual migration of the organizations that are, you know, uh, considering or have been starting a migration to those alternative office suites to ODF, which means that we have a growing number of organizations that are not transitioning to Office 2010, uh, Microsoft Office 2010, or to uh, Microsoft Office uh, 2013. 
That is true. And this number is growing, and we can see that all around. We can see that at the level of LibreOffice, this is something that, you know, uh, we've been, uh, we've been, uh, uh, contemplating. We had feedback. But it's also something that I see, I would say, in a, in a you know, on a business level, uh, almost on a, on a weekly basis. Now, the, the, the people, the organizations moving to LibreOffice, for instance, uh, are very happy with that. that. But, um, for them, the migration and the use of ODF is still something that is not obvious, and it's not because they just migrated to LibreOffice that they will start to uh, use ODF. So this is something that um, is a bit unfortunate because what this means is that we have not, um, you know, we have not crossed the gap where basically when you want to use an Office suite that is uh, standards compliant but that is not Microsoft Office, well, it doesn't mean that you will start to use ODF. The paradox, though, is that when you look at the ODF implementation of Microsoft Office 2010 of ODF, you will see that the implementation uh, has a, actually a high quality. Uh, actually speaking, uh, we went from a, an implementation, ODF implementation, in the former version of uh, Microsoft Office uh, that was, I would say, rather problematic in many aspects. Um, we went from there to uh, an, a good quality implementation. So that's a paradox. And right now I think the challenge for ODF remains very much the same, which is a bit frustrating. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is also given the... Uh, a competitive landscape. Uh, it is also a sign of vitality for ODF. Is it still the case that back in the days there was the converter Senate created for Microsoft Office? It was a plugin created for, I believe, uh, at the latest it was Office 2007, was it? Yeah, seven, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And uh, and then what I last recall is Oracle took over Sun, of course. And what they did first is requiring people either to pay for it or to subscribe and then to pay. And it was becoming a bit dodgy because they weren't exactly encouraging people to use the plugin for ODF. Uh, there was a bit of um, um, a bit of anger. Yeah, well, I think can... Microsoft at the same time, of course, was trying to push its own kind of impose its own point of view on ODF at what ODF should be, embrace and extend. Yeah, I, I think that, that you know, um, um, what happened there uh, was uh, definitely uh, a waste. Um, I don't exactly remember what were the buying terms of the uh, of that plugin once Oracle took over, but indeed it was something like uh, basically you can buy this plugin, but it's only if you buy it in bulk and if you vaguely uh, put your twelve you know, your ten fingers on the keyboard, but on specific instances, by a full moon night, and essentially agree that you shall be giving your soul to Satan. Uh, so it was like basically a, an instant stop uh, for that plugin. And um, you know, I think that that was a bit problematic. Now, of course, um, you know, Microsoft again uh, is having a, a pretty good implementation of ODF. But the question remains, you know, um, Microsoft has obviously not made the decision uh, to uh, ditch OpenXML and uh, whatever that means. Uh, as you know, there are multiple versions of OpenXML. So they have not made that decision. The, the, they've not made the decision to dump OpenXML and embrace ODF. What they did is that they came up with uh, an implementation of ODF that is basically meeting the uh, legal requirements of, you know, the procurement practices and criteria of specific public entities uh, in all around the world. Oh, that's, 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 that's what's going on. Um, but they're obviously not saying that ODF is great and that we should, everybody should move there. Well, I suppose it's a very convenient. People say, oh, it's very nice to play along, but of course one of the things that they try to do here is to say that if you're looking for compliance with ODF, oh look, just carry on using Office. The other thing they do is, if I recall correctly, is put in some uh, 
binary enclosures inside the ODF trees to do things like equations, at least the missing components or the missing unspecified parts or underspecified mm-hmm. parts of ODF. Uh, is that still the case? Um, so um, I would first agree on, on the first uh, on what you said first. It's true that it's definitely you know a, 